tours. So over the years, I have been on over 20 different organized group tours. And they've ranged in size from five people to like 55 people and have been like a day, two days, up to 45 days. I've literally been there and done them all. So if you're thinking of doing an organized group tour in your travels, this is what you need to know. Not all group tours are created equally. Price, budget, accommodation, what's included. There is a ton of trial and error that goes into making a group tour. They are a fine oiled machine and there is a whole lot of variety in them. And they are an awesome way to travel if you are looking for certain things. Why group tours are awesome. They are easy, like really easy. You just show up and everything is organized for you. Perfect for solo travelers because you instantly have travel buddies. They are safer because you know, safety in numbers. And I tend to do a lot more group tours when I'm feeling a little bit more unsafe in the region or the country that I'm traveling to. Or if I just don't know it as well, if I just feel uncomfortable, I'll hop on a group tour. And now the biggest factor on why people don't like group tours is, well, the tour was probably never intended for them. And let me clarify, do your research before you book any group tour because there are a lot of different tours that are targeted toward different age groups, different travel styles, different objectives. Hence why we do a lot of research before booking a tour and look at the marketing material of the tour you are looking at. Who is the people that are displayed in the brochures? Do they look like your demographic, your age group? Does it look like the things that you want to do? That's a good indicator because who they're like targeting through their marketing is who the tours are probably intended for. Also, if you are more concerned about the age thing, there are age restricted groups. Like there are 18 to 35 tours. There are all age tours. And then there are like more senior and more adult tours. As a general rule of thumb, if there is no limit on the age group, the more expensive the tour and the more remote the tour is, the more likelihood there's gonna be older demographic and there tends to be more couples on those type of tours. Whereas the cheaper the tour and the more bucket list item tends to skew a lot younger. Money. I'm sure you've heard somewhere in your travels that organized tours are more expensive than doing it on your own. This is so necessarily not the case. There is, again, so many factors that are involved into the organization and the type of tour. Some tours provide everything for you. I'm talking like accommodations, food, activities. Some tours provide literally just the basics of getting you to A and B, like hop on, hop off buses. Other tours provide that plus accommodation. There's a lot of factors. I lost my cat. She said, enough of you, Nadine. I ain't going on no group tours. What it comes down to is, if you are traveling solo, solo travel can be quite a bit more expensive than doing a group tour because you are paying for everything yourself. You're paying for all your transportation yourself. So that's where you're really, really gonna save when it comes to a group tour because they organize transportation for you. If you're traveling in a smaller group, then you could do it cheaper yourself. And again, depending on the region that you are traveling to, the tour might be more or less expensive. What it comes down to is do the numbers, calculate the cost of the tour and calculate the cost of doing it on your own before you decide if you are really worried about the budget and which one would be the better option for you. Just spend some time and calculate it out and then you'll know. Okay, so now let's break down the tour basics. Optionals, AKA, Add-ons, they are like navigating a minefield. Most of the time, they are amazing and totally worth it, but occasionally you get the ones that are super touristy and way overpriced and are just a waste of time and money. Always budget more because of the damn optionals. No, seriously, these things pop up everywhere. Every tour has additional, they'll list the optionals and then there'll be like these pop-up optionals that the tour guide will present to you. The optionals are such a tricky one because a lot of tours will not include the optionals in their pricing. They'll have a list of things that you can do for an additional price. Um, and then sometimes they'll just occasionally find additional ones and they'll throw them in. Every single group tour offers this as a way to like customize your own trip, personalize it and pick and choose what exactly it is that you want to do. I would say like 80%, at least 80% of people choose to do the optionals. 
And sometimes you will miss out if you are not doing the optionals. So if you are really tight on your budget and you're doing group tour and you're not budgeting for any optionals, please, please give yourself a little room for optionals because there are some golden gooses out there or golden eggs. Is it golden eggs? I don't know, but there's some good ones. So budget for it. Accommodations. So this really highly depends on your tour type. Most tours, I'm talking like 90% at least, will provide accommodations for you. There are other tours like hop on hop off buses or like day tours that won't provide any accommodation for you. Accommodation is really one of the benefits of doing a group tour, mainly because as a tour provider, they can negotiate certain rates and lower rates for you to stay at these hotels or hostels or accommodations that they're booking for you because they bring in volume. That's kind of how the business works. They're bringing in a certain amount of people, they get discounted rate. Also, this is the area where your price and your budget goes the furthest. So when you're picking more expensive tours, it's generally because you're gonna get a more expensive accommodation. That is the biggest difference that I've personally found in the more expensive versus the cheaper tours is the accommodation. Well, the cheaper tours will put you up in more cheaper places to stay like hostels uh, whereas like the more luxury tours the more expensive tours are gonna splurge and give you more comfortable beds more nicer breakfasts like nicer hotels where you can rest your head and have a good night's sleep on your travels now with all tours there's a bit of give and take because there's a bit of compromise when it comes to being in a big group tour and when you're working with budgets. So sometimes you will have an awesome accommodation that's, you know, maybe up on the cheaper side, maybe up on the smaller side, especially if you're in Europe because the buildings that are in the center of the city are just smaller than the ones that were built later on, on the outskirts. So you'll have a, a more basic accommodation, but the benefit is it'll be like day right in the center of town. Everything you need is right there walking distance. Whereas on the opposite end, sometimes you will stay in a more luxurious place and it'll be more comfortable, but you will be further out. You might have to take transit to get in. You're not walking distance to everything that you wanna be. There's kind of a give or take on these tours. I would again, research the tour you're looking at and see what kind of accommodation they offer. Which one do they lean toward? Food, food, food food and mm, love 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 me some food this is a very hit or miss category food can be very very hit or miss meaning that a uh, lot most of the time most of the time your breakfast will be included because it's just easier when you have a big group to have breakfast at the place that you are staying at lunches and dinners are then a mixture of organized and free or like your own free lunch and dinner with organized dinners, they can be very good because the tour group knows exactly where to go. They know like the awesome places to eat or <laughs> they can be like pasta dishes, simple pasta dishes and buffets, which they're, I mean like, again, the gammon in buffets, they can be good buffets. I've had some good buffets and I've had just some buffets. My advice is to look at the reviews and solo out the reviews on the food because when it's a hit, it's a hit. When it's a miss, it's just ugh, buffets. Another tip is to always take advantage of the free lunches and dinners. Please take advantage of it. Find something somewhere cute and quirky and fun to go eat. This is your opportunity to get away from the group. Usually when there's free lunches and dinners, people try to organize and come together if they're in a group to kind of make little mini groups to go places. Again, with the group dinners and organized dinners, sometimes they don't tend to be the local foods. They tend to be more generic foods that'll please everybody because that's the thing when you have a group you gotta please everybody you can't just have one really specialty dinner that most of the people in the tour group might not like so they're kind of more easier generic that's why there's a lot of buffets because buffets are just easier as a group tour so on your free time go find something cool and quirky and then your food situation won't all be all that bad Drinking and parties. So drinking happens on all tours, of all ages, everywhere. No, I'm serious. There will always be some type of drinking involved with all group tours. Now, most of the time, these are fantastic, casual, fun situations. It might be beer tasting, wine tasting, spirit tasting, or trying local drinks that gets you a chance to bond as a group and have a great social time. They're literally a great social time, and that's why they are usually incorporated in some way or another in every single group tour. 
It's like icebreaker 101. Going out and having a few drinks with the people you don't know anything about, but you're gonna be stuck on a tour with for many, many days. Spirits and beers and wines are a really big part of a lot of cultures. And it is a great way to experience that culture is by tasting their local beverages. You should never feel pressured to drink because you are traveling and even though these are incorporated in the tour and everyone else is drinking you should never feel pressure to and it's totally okay not to i've done i have not drank on many tours multiple times and i have drank on tours many times don't feel peer pressured into doing anything or drinking anything just because everybody else is there are some people that live for the party that's literally all they came to do on this trip is to drink and drink and party and drink the biggest thing with the people who the crazy party people that are on the trips is just be respectful of your other travelers that are on the group with you that's the biggest thing like if you are one of those people that just want to go out every night and go drink to, at the local bars and go dance and do whatever it is that you want to do just be respectful for your other like tour mates that you're not being like ridiculously loud or ridiculously rude or inappropriate because they're also on this tour they're also paying to be there don't be fat person. When there is drinking and young people, there tends to be hookups. So let's just awkwardly talk about them. Hookups happen all the time. I'm serious, guys. These things, travel in group tours is the perfect combination. When, and drinking, drinking, traveling, strangers, foreign countries, group tours are the perfect combination for hookups. People will do it. I mean, literally. People are gonna do it. You might do it. Practice safe, responsible adulting. I don't think I need to go any further with that. I mean, it's not all that bad. People, I know people have gotten married after they met on a group tour. So group tours can be magic. And there's a lot of couples and a lot of honeymooners that tend to go on group tours as well. So, you know, <laughs> spare time is really nice. And all group tours will incorporate some type of spare time. Some give you a lot of spare time, some give you very little spare time. Use your spare time, please. Use your spare time to the best of your abilities. Um, this is your chance to get away. If you are not somebody who wants to be social all the time, go. This is your solo bit. Go do your little trip in between the group stuff. Venture off. This is also your time that if the tour is, is covering things that you don't want to see and there's something in the city that you do want to see, go do it. Go see it. Definitely don't feel like you have to stay with the group in your spare time. This is if you are solo traveling, if you want to get away from all the socializing, there's a lot of socializing on group tours, go. Go do you. Go venture out and have fun. Sharing rooms and roommates. Now, how a lot of tours operate are they're going to pair you with a, a roommate, a buddy, a buddy, a chum. This can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on, again, your personal styles, your personal preference. Typically, the tour price will include you sharing a room. That can be with, if you're traveling with a friend, obviously, it'd be with your friend. If you aren't and you're traveling solo, they'll pair you up with another solo traveler. Now, this is comes decision time because this is one, a great way to instantly have a new travel buddy. So if you're apprehensive and you don't know if you're gonna know anybody, and you're, you're worried about traveling solo and by yourself, make sure you, you don't get a solo room. Make sure that you don't pay for the additional solo upgrade because you will want that roommate because instant travel buddy and you'll feel so much more comfortable and more relaxed. Solo upgrades, there is an option on pretty much all these tours to pay for a solo room or to upgrade yourself to a solo room. Sometimes you just get lucky if the, if the numbers are odd, but most of the time you gotta pay. This is an option for those who don't, are more of the introverted type, that you don't wanna be around people all the time because in group tours, especially like the longer group tours, like I've been on a 45 day group tour, it's nice to have a little bit of solo time, to just have that time in the evening in your room by yourself. If you're one of those people that want time by yourself, pay for the upgrade. You're gonna enjoy the tour so much more when you have your own private time and your own bathroom and et cetera together. Buses or coaches or planes or trains. You spend a lot of time on transportation as a group. It generally takes a little bit more longer to organize, but it is organized for you. So you don't have to worry about timetables, etc. But you are gonna be spending time on it like all the travel. So prepare yourself for being on a bus with a lot of other people. Also, a lot of people like to bring those like little head thingies. If that's, if you're one of those people, bring it. I'm not a, I'm not a. Don't be late. 
This is like my number one pet peeve. And people, viewers, subscribers, if you guys are going on group tours, please do not be the late person. The tour leader sets out an itinerary with certain times to be places because generally there's a booking for that or there's a reason why you have to leave at a certain time or arrive at a certain time. When people are late, it delays the entire group and there's nothing worse than being delayed by people who cannot manage their time. If you do it once, okay, maybe it's a mistake, but please do not be late because a lot of times these tour groups will have a policy that they'll leave without you. I'm not kidding here. They will leave you behind if you are late. I've almost been left behind because they cannot delay the whole bus or the whole tour because of you. So I want you to be aware of that. I don't want you to be that person who is the late person so you can prep and prepare and you know in advance. And last, you will make lifelong friends. I'm serious. Some of the people that you meet on these tours become life buddies. Like you become Facebook friends. I know people from my tour groups that have put together other tour groups. They've gone on other trips together. They've organized gatherings. They've stayed friends. Again, they've gotten married. All everything because you are getting to experience an, an another culture, another country, the, the joy of travel with all of these strangers, these cool people that you never would have met them normally. And here you have the opportunity to meet people from all around the world. And I think for me, that's one of the best parts of group tours is just getting to meet other people and travel with other people that are just excited to travel. It's just great being forced to meet new people. It's such a great experience. <laughs> no, seriously, group chores are a really awesome way to travel if you are thinking about that type of travel or at least supplementing it with your solo or other types of uh, like friend travel. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned a lot and got some insights on group tours and planning it and, and all of that jazz that's involved. There's a lot. This is a long video, so I apologize for that. But if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if there's anything that I missed down below in the comments and or your experiences with your group tours. What tours have you been on? Um, how many people, where, like what has been your experience with them down below in the comments. And last, of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you aren't already for more tips and advice. And uh, happy travels, guys. I will see you again soon with another video. Bye.